Ty. So we were talking about having a team guy in, kind of who to pick and how it works. And I think one of the key things in, in leading the church is once the guys come in, what do you do with it? Because, you know, there's a tendency to say, that was great, thanks for the input, but I know there's more to it than that. Can you kind of talk through what you do after that? Yeah, so I see what you've done, Chris. And you are now jumping to the end. I'm going to miss the middle, and God willing, we'll come back to the middle, middle. because that's probably some important truth. But it's a good truth. It's a good question. I think, uh, again, if we understand partnership and understand the reason for the gathering and bringing the team guy in or the team person in, then you'll also realize that it's not just back to business as normal. It's mm. You've got to understand that as best as we can as a team, and I've asked my team to keep doing this, is that we've done our best to hear God. We're not just bringing our latest and greatest revelation. We're not just bringing something that's going to blow your socks off. It's actually, we've processed, we've prayed, we've fasted, mm. done our utmost to hear God for the context, for your church, for your proceeding future where you headed and all that and so when we come maybe because it's not new truth or maybe it's a reminder or we make no apologies for that but we do want to let you know that we've done our best to hear God and so all that we're offloading all that we're preaching and sharing we believe we've heard God on we've done our best to hear God and to be faithful with what God says is to to process it and ask some of the questions what did God say and what must we do yeah. And if it's to keep going, then that's great. If it's to adjust, which I just want to suggest that the majority of input that God does bring is that we need to adjust some things. We sure. all kind of get focused on our thing or the thing. And then when we get someone in who's just challenging by another way of seeing it, suddenly, oh, yeah, we've missed the point. Or maybe we've focused on the wrong, the big picture, the king and the kingdom comes back again. And, and so there is always generally a shifting. Maybe it's just heart or intention. Hmm. Um, but if you just stand up and say, great preach, thank you very much, good truth, go listen to it online, but we're going to carry on with our series next week. In my opinion, it's a little bit disheartening because yeah. it, you're telling people great truth, but we're going to get back to what we really believe God's saying. Mm. And, and maybe you're not saying that, but it is what's coming across. So my, my perspective, that's why three or four times a year is all you want guys to come in. And, and then in doing that, you can then process together what God has said and bring your elders together after that time you have an eldership team or a leadership team and sit down and chew through what has God said what do you believe God's saying how are we going to adjust is there anything we need to again not not to point fingers at but to help us be more effective that's what these gifts are given to help equip the saints for ministry but ultimately to mature people and bring them to to maturity sure and so that's why we've got to process these things and make sure maybe there's a, a shift maybe God's highlighted something that Maybe it says, let's pause our series for a moment and let's re-preach or take, mm. a, 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 let's take um, some of these points and, and maybe for the next few weeks, just re-massage them into the people, into the ministry, into the life, into the foundation of our churches. Yeah. Uh, maybe what's the adjustment? What's God saying? What must we do? Because whenever God speaks, there's a reason and it's that we will go and do something. And so I think we can do a lot better in that. Um, maybe make some effort to just get some people to in the local church, in your church, to give some feedback publicly the next week, or what has God said, what do you feel, how was that helpful? It's just helping people understand, not a guest speaker, not a tag on, not an mm. add on, not just a, a continuance in your series, but actually these gifts have come in for God to speak into our lives, regardless of the gift, not just the prophet. Uh, right. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor and teacher, all five gifts are given by Christ for the church. So whichever gift you're getting in, can I suggest they're doing their best to hear God, and you've got to be faithful in hearing God and maybe working it out, saying, what did God say? And so, yeah, it's not just business as usual, great preach, let's carry on. Yeah. It's really filtering through the things God said personally and the things He wants us to do corporately, publicly, and how we can adjust and how we need to massage these truths in again and again. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of guys even take what's been taught and give it out to the connect groups yeah. and have those guys kind of talk through it, right. through it so people can take it to a deeper level. Um, and I have to confess, there's been times I felt like you've given me my next series yeah. and now I have a new end, awesome, that kind of right? thing. But it is amazing because you'll take it and break it down because you guys only have the limited time you're there. Mm. We can take those points and break them down and really let the church get a hold of the truth in a deeper way. Yeah. Uh, plus it gives me a, you know, Saturday night a little easier. <laughs> but uh, but so, it is that. And I mean, honestly, can I just say, personally, that nothing blesses me more than to hear someone say, we're going to take this and we're going to massage it and look at it and re-preach it. And 
it blesses us to know it's not just a waste, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, I think that's true partnership. That's understanding. As you would who preach, love your people to take it and actually live it out. In the same sense, we would like that. And it's not about us, but it just makes it worthwhile. We don't feel like we've just fulfilled or filled the pulpit for a Sunday or given a guy mm. a break. We've actually, yeah. we build him. And we, want to, we, we love the blessing part of what we do, but we, we really focus on the building. Yeah. And to build means you've got to keep laying stuff and you've got to make sure that what God's saying is being massaged into your local church. Um, even some of the team guys, you know, they, which I love. Um, you know, I've preached stuff, obviously, in our team meetings or even in some of the churches that are in partnership with us. And some of those team guys have literally taken that truth, those truths almost verbatim, which is great, because it's from the Bible anyway. But, yeah. but brought it and preached it in the churches we were leading. And, uh, and, and it was like my, the message I gave them, they can now preach it back in our church. And... Amazing how many of the people in our church would come and say, gee, this is great. When are you going to start preaching this? <laughs> and I'd be like, gee, if you just knew, I gave that guy that. And by the way, if you just look at our website, we have been preaching this. But it's just, it's God's way of, I guess, keeping us humble, but also uh, reiterating through different perspectives mm -hmm. and not just familiar voices and, and re, re highlighting the truth that is necessary and needed where all people get it. And so, again, it's just. It's, you don't have to do this, but to be honest, then what's the point of having these gifts? And yeah. you're never going to benefit fully in a teaming with a translocal if it's just back to business, back to usual. Oh, we know this stuff. Well, you might know it. You probably do know it. Your people probably know it. But the question is, are we doing it? Mm. And that is a big difference. Knowing and doing is not the same.